हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ स्टेटिकली डिटर्मिनेट ट्रस नाउ फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी नीड टू डिटरमाइन व्हाट इज ट्रस द ट्रस इज अ कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ टाइज एंड स्ट्रट्स व्हिच इज डिजाइन टू कैरी एक्सियल फोर्सेस ओनली नोन एज ट्रस Now, truss is a combination of only ties and struts, okay, which is designed to carry only the axial forces. It means that it will carry only the axial forces. No bending will be developed in that member, okay. Now, the member who carries compressive axial forces are known as struts, and ties are the member who carry tensile axial forces. Now, if a member will contain or carry only the compressive axial forces then that member will be known as strut and if a member will carry only the tensile axial forces then that member will be known as ties okay now we had defined the truss that it is a combination of ties and struts struts are those member which can carry only the axial compressive force and ties are the member which can carry only the tensile axial force now the difference between column and strut okay now many of the students knows that strut is a inclined member or strut is a member which is in a truss and column is a vertical member only now they don't know the basic difference between the strut and column now here we will just see what is the basic difference between strut and column now strut is the compression member of truss now if a compression member is present in a truss then it will be known as strut whereas the column is the compression member in a frame now if a compression member is present in a frame then it will be known as column now since the trusses are designed to carry axial forces only hence struts are the member which can carry only axial compression whereas column can carry axial compression and bending both now in the figure shown first one is the strut and second one is the column in case of strut because of the axial forces in the truss strut will undergo only the axial compression that's why strut is a member which can carry only axial compression but in case of frames or columns the column is subjected to a compression force which will be acting to some eccentricity now if the force is acting or if the load is acting to some eccentricity now what will happen at the cg there will be a compression force axial compression force like this and due to its equal and opposite force it will form a couple it will form a couple which will create bending here of the magnitude p into e if the value of force or load is p okay now the column will undergo axial compression which will be seen here as well as bending both so both strut and column can be vertical or inclined okay so we can't say that column is a vertical member and strut is an inclined member both column and strut will be vertical or inclined but the basic difference is that strut is a member which can carry only the axial compression whereas column is an member which can carry axial compression and bending both okay now that is all about the introduction of statically determinate truss now we can go for the assumptions of the trusses now assumption in the truss analysis now we have to see the assumption in truss analysis so first assumption is the members of the trusses are connected through smooth pins it means that at each and every joint there will be a smooth pin through which members will be connected okay now the force applied only at the joint it cannot be applied over the length of the member now the load is applied only at the joint because the bending of the member is not allowed in case of trusses or if the load is applied at the member then what will happen bending of that member will takes place and we don't allow the bending of the member in the trusses that's why the force is applied only at the joint not at the members okay now the next assumption will be a truss is made up of straight members only in case of curvy members their bending will takes place now in case of truss the member will be straight because if the member will be curved then 
due to this force acting or at the joint what will happen bending of that member will takes place and we don't allow bending of member in trusses that's why we will use straight members only in the truss no curvy members will be used in the truss because their bending will takes place and we don't allow bending of members in case of truss okay now the next one will be the if the member is under tension then the direction of force is shown away from the joint and if the member is under compression then the direction is shown towards the joint it means that if the direction of force is shown towards the joint then the member is under compression and if the direction of force is shown away from the joint then the member will be in tension that is all about the assumption of trusses now we had seen the introduction of statically determinate truss as well as the assumptions in the truss analysis okay students that is all about our first topic thank you very much